Hi. Now in this tutorial what I've got here is four integrals basically of the same type. Although they don't essentially look it at first. Now before I explain how to do them there might be some of you out there who are happy to give this a go as part of your revision. If you want to have a go just obviously pause the video and when you want to look at the work solutions you'll find them at the very end of the video so just fast forward and you'll see them at the end of the video. But if you're unsure of how to do these types of integrals they fall into a particular type of category. So to appreciate how to integrate those type of integrals I've just shown you, we've got to step backwards. We've got to step backwards to differentiating say y equals the natural log of x. This is a standard differential. In the past it's been shown to you that dy by dx equals 1 over x. Something you should be familiar with. If we had say y equals 2 times the natural log of x then when it comes to differentiating this with respect to x dy dx equals 2 times the differential of the natural log of x which is 2 times 1 over x or simply 2 over x. So in general if you've got y equals any constant let's call it a multiplied by the natural log of x then dy by dx always turns out to be a times the differential of the natural log of x. In other words 1 over x, a times 1 over x just gives us a over x. So where is this leading us to? Well it follows that if we ever had to integrate say a constant over x with respect to x, what this equals to and I'll write it down here actually, you'll see why in a moment. But you can see that if we regard integration as the opposite or inverse of differentiation, what did we differentiate to get a over x? Well clearly you can see it was a times the natural log of x, so we get a times the natural log of x. And we don't tend to write x by the way just like this, we always put it in a mod sign. I'm not going to explain why we do that at this stage, okay? Not at all in this video, but I will explain it in an another video. But just for the moment, just accept that you always put your function of x in a mod. And don't forget the constant of integration plus c. Now I left a line here because there's an alternative way of looking at this. Because this is a constant, you are allowed to take constants out the front of an integral. You can't take variables like an x or anything like that, but constants that's okay. So you've got a times 1 over x integrated with respect to x. And this is obviously the reverse of differentiating the natural log of x. So you can see either way whether we consider this one going straight to this answer or this going to this answer we're going to get the same thing. So this is a result that you should try and learn. All right. So, so for example suppose you had to integrate 3 over 5x with respect to x. What we can do is we've got a constant here 3 fifths, 3 fifths times 1 over x so we can think of this as 3 fifths times the integral of 1 over x with respect to x. Again we're allowed to drag the constant out the front of the integral. So what's the integral of the reciprocal function 1 over x? So you can see it's the natural log of x. We had it up here. So we end up with 3 fifths natural log of x and again don't forget to put that in mod signs and then plus the constant of integration. So there's an example for you based on that particular idea. Now what I want to do next is just extend this idea a little further. Suppose we had for instance y equals the natural log of say 3x minus 2 and we had to differentiate this. 
We should be familiar with differentiating functions like this by using the chain rule. If you're unsure of the chain rule, let me just remind you very quickly. Chain rule is something I've covered in my video tutorials. If you're unsure, just go on my website, look under differentiation, the chain rule. But what it is, is that if you want to find dy by dx, it is the same as doing dy by d something multiplied by the same d something over dx. This d something must be the same. It's as if they cancel. I'm going to call it, say, dt. And I use this to differentiate this function because I've got a composite function here. I've got a single letter like I had up here, x. So what I do is I let t equal the 3x minus 2. So that means that instead of y equaling the natural log of 3x minus 2, it's now y equals the natural log of t. So I've got a single letter here, just like I had up here. So when it comes to differentiating this, I can say that therefore dy by dx is equal to, well we've got to find dy by dt first of all, and so if y equals the natural log of t, dy by dt, by this rule here, must be 1 over t. So 1 over t is really 1 over 3x minus 2, because t was 3x minus 2. Let's put that in brackets, and we multiply this now by dt by dx. t was 3x minus 2, so if we differentiate t with respect to x, we just simply get 3. So what we end up with is equal to 3 over 3x minus 2. But let's just have a look at what happens when we put a particular constant in the front of our y value. That constant is going to remain all the way through. Let's suppose we pick our constant to be a third. If I put a third there, there'll be a third in the final answer here. Now because I've picked a third, you'll notice that these two threes now cancel one another. And so what I'm left with is the reciprocal function 1 over 3x minus 2. The reciprocal of 3x minus 2 is 1 over 3x minus 2. So what I'm trying to say here is that if we had, say, y equals the natural log of a linear function, something like this, of the form ax plus b. Let's just mark it in here, ax plus b. If we differentiated this by using the chain rule, just like I did above, then calling this t, we'd get 1 over t, when we differentiate it, 1 over ax plus b, and we'd have to multiply this by the differential of t, ax plus b in other words, and that would give a. So it'd have this being multiplied by a. Now if I was to multiply throughout here by 1 over a, then that 1 over a would appear here. The a's would then cancel, and I would end up with 1 over ax plus b. The reciprocal then of ax plus b is 1 over ax plus b. So what I'm trying to say then is if ever you have to integrate something of the form 1 over ax plus b, a linear function like this, with respect to x, then what did I differentiate to give me this? Well, you can see from this example, it was 1 over a multiplied by the natural log of ax plus b. So it's going to be 1 over a natural log of ax plus b. But we must remember to put this in mod signs. And then plus a constant of integration. So this is another particular integral that I would ask you to try and learn. Alright, so we'll just put that in a box there. So for instance, if I had, as an example, the integral of 5 over, say, 3x minus 2, 
with respect to x I had to integrate that how would I do it well I'd pull the 5 out because it's a constant 5 being multiplied by 1 over 3x minus 2 so we've got this integral now don't forget the dx on the end we've got the reciprocal of 3x minus 2 and we can see that this has this pattern structure so we would have ended up with the 5 there and that is multiplied by 1 over a the a being the 3 so it would be 1 third 5 times a third which is really 5 thirds multiplied by the natural log of the mod of 3x minus 2 and then plus a constant of integration so there's another example for you then based on this idea now the integrals that we started this tutorial off with are based on these ideas here in the red boxes all right so we'll just go back to those now here they are and what I've done here is just given the summary of those two results that we have just worked out you might like to pause the video now if you haven't tried these have a go at them and see how you get on and then come back and we'll work through them okay welcome back if you had a go so let's just go through this first one now we've got a constant here 7 so we can pull that constant out the front of the integral and get 7 times the integral of 1 over x that's integrated with respect to x and we can see this is like this one up here so we know that we're going to have 7 multiplied by the natural log of the mod of x and then don't forget that constant of integration plus c for the second one the integral is 6 over 7x with respect to x all we've got to do is see the 6 sevenths as the constant pull it out the front of an integral and you've got 1 over x integrated with respect to x we know that this is the natural log of mod of x so we just have 6 sevenths this time 6 sevenths times the natural log of the mod of x and then plus the constant of integration and with 3 with this one let's pull out the 2 first of all we've got 2 times the integral of 1 then over 3x minus 1 that's integrated with respect to x so this is this type here the a at 1 over ax plus b and you can see that we get 1 over a natural log of the mod of ax plus b so what is the a value well in this example it's the 3 so we end up with the 2 multiplied by the integral of 1 over 3x minus 1 which is a third natural log of the mod of 3x minus 1 and then the constant of integration plus c is added clean this up 2 times a third gives you 2 thirds 2 thirds then multiplied by the natural log of 3x minus 1 plus c and the last one or with this one we can pull out 3 fifths as the constant 3 fifths multiplied by the integral then of 1 over 2x minus 7 and that's integrated with respect to x so what we get is 3 fifths and for this integral the a value is the 2 so we just get that this is multiplied by 1 over 2 a half multiplied by the natural log of the mod of 2x minus 7 and then plus c clean this one up and you get 3 fifths times a half which is 3 over 10 3 tenths and then you have the natural log of the mod of 2x minus 7 plus that constant of integration okay well I hope that's given you some idea then how you tackle these particular types okay so uh, that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial so good luck when you have ones like that